A little bit of background of how the day unfolded Tuesday. Um, our firefighters are faced with multiple large wildfires beginning just after midnight Tuesday morning. These firefighters are compounded by extreme winds that we're all aware of. The first fire up in Upper Makwa burned about 675 acres. By 11 o'clock in the morning, that's when the Lahaina fire began. It was fueled by gusts up to 60 miles an hour. Um, some even reported up to 80 miles an hour, but we saw up to 60 miles an hour in the localized area. Uh, we redirected re resources from many parts of the island to respond to the Lahaina area. And around noon, an additional fire started in Kula, um, and that spurred evacuations of um, Kula Lani Circle, Kula Manu in that um, afternoon, and resources were also directed up there. Around 6 p.m., a fourth wildfire started that afternoon on Pulehu Road down in the Central Valley. Uh, that burned several hundred acres, and again, resources were had to be directed, and um, decisions had to be made to triage what was um, most important at the time. So that fire was left with less resources. Um, as of yesterday, it burned 675. I'm sorry, not that fire. Um, that fire was several hundred acres. I don't have a number on that one yet. Um, what we want to share with the community is that none of the fires are 100% contained right now. And there's still active fire in all of those areas that I've discussed. Um, additionally, we've had many small fires um, in between these large fires. And um, with the current weather pattern that we're facing, we still have the potential for um, you know, rapid fire behavior. And so we just want to make, pe make sure people stay out of the area, stay diligent. If they see um, smoke and flames, please call 911. Um, we've stood up our incident management team to manage um, our resources within our department that are focused mostly on containing all of these emergencies right now and stopping them from growing. Um, our department has received both state and federal support and resources that are on the way, some landing right now. And um, what we really want to share with the community is uh, part of the reason we need them to stay out is because it's still very, very hazardous in the burn areas. Things are falling every minute around us, and there have been some people that have been hurt by just falling, telephone poles and such. So we need to make sure the area is safe before anybody can return to that uh, space. Um, that's all the comments I have for now. Thank you. Well, hello. Finally, we'd like to bring up Police Chief John Pelletier. <clears throat> Thank you. Our deepest condolences, and it can't be stated enough because we don't know how many people we have dead. When this is all said and done, we just don't know. I have to say thank you to the incredible work of the men and women of the Maui Police Department that day in and day out do an incredible job. I have call takers that are answering calls knowing that on the other end we don't have the answers for their loved ones. And I've got officers that are doing everything they can to stand with our firefighters to make sure that this is the safest community possible because right now on the face of Maui that will be here for a very long time. We know that scars uh, heal in time, but they always remain. We need three things from the community right now. We need your patience. We need your prayers and we need your perseverance. Understand this, Lahaina Town is hollowed sacred ground right now because our EV are in that ground. We have to get them out. We will get them out as fast as we can, but I need your patience while we do this. I know you need to get out there. I know, I know that you guys don't have some of the supplies, you don't have power. But we have to respect the fact that we've got loved ones in that earth and we've got to do the right thing and get them out the right way. That's going to take time. I'll get the road open as fast as I can, but I have to do it safely. As we move forward, I need you to know this. This community is unlike any other. This is one team, one fight. We do have the state, the local, the federal resources here. That flag is red, white, and blue. That Fred flag is red, white, and blue. All of us, all of us bleed red. We are here to be with you in this time of need. We are Maui strong. We will get through this. We will be better. We will make this the safest, best community possible. And we need you to understand right now, we need your help more than ever. God bless you. God bless Maui. God bless Hawaii.
Mahalo Nui. At this time, um, we'd like to entertain questions from the media present. I'd like to ask for your respectful kokua as we go through that process. I'm going to limit initially to one question per media outlet. Please raise your hand. Please wait for me to call upon you, at which time I'd like to ask you to please state your name and your news organization. Then you may ask the question, and then we will have the team uh, respond accordingly. I will start here. I'm Stuart Yurton with Civil Beat. Um, I have a question. How much and how long, both for public and private um, repair and uh, recovery? And when I say this, I mean how much money are you thinking it's going to take both for the private side and public infrastructure, and how long do you expect this to take? So thank you, Stuart. It's a very good question. Uh, the question, if you couldn't hear it, is uh, how long and what's the size of this recovery? It will take time to know the full extent, uh, but it will be in the billions of dollars, without a doubt. Uh, we're first focused on lives lost. That's why we are so heartbroken and why we have to respect what the chief of police had to say. Uh, there will be active recovery over the coming days and weeks of, of the bones of those who have been lost. Uh, so it will take time. Uh, to give perspective, uh, it is going to take many years to rebuild Lahaina. When you see the full, uh, the full extent of the destruction of Lahaina, it will shock you. It does appear like a bomb and fire went off, if I may. And all of those buildings virtually are going to have to be rebuilt. It will be a new Lahaina that Maui builds in its own image, with its own values. But it's going to be billions of dollars. Uh, the good news that we had today was we are so coordinated with state, county, and federal support that it took less than a quarter of a day, six hours, to get the approval from the president to bring those resources in. I think what I'll do is I will ask Bob to kind of give you an idea of how, in general, can't speak yet to how fast the dollars will come to our residents, but in general, what happens when FEMA gets that kind of de uh, designation? Uh, we have a disaster relief fund <clears throat> that we draw funding on that's appropriated annually, uh, and there's also supplementals to it. Uh, and so in these disasters, the grants to individuals could happen pretty quickly. Um, the homes are uh, destroyed. We do already have mapping uh, of uh, from the air. We've already processed it against there. So start the call in, and we could actually get inspectors to use some of that visual imagery to validate the damages to someone's house. Uh, what we'll do is set up recovery centers uh, with uh, Maui uh, in locations over time so that as individuals have questions and want to do case management, they can come in there. But that funding through there not only could provide rental assistance, but repair costs for your house and, and uh, other assistance if, you're a, um, if it's your primary property. Um, and after rental assistance, uh, I mean after uh, insurance, uh, it's a direct grant. Uh, basically, uh, you know, we send it into your account. There's no cost share. Uh, it could be done fairly quickly. And you'll see numbers come up. They'll start happening pretty quickly. Probably over the next week, you'll see dollars going out on the street pretty quickly. We'll bring in uh, individuals that will go out. And for those that maybe can't register or have difficulty registering over the Internet, we will go ahead and uh, try to come to you. We have people who go out to the field with palm pads. They'll look for you. Uh, we'll go to the shelters. We'll go to their locations and try to help them. As far as public assistance, it's primary a reimbursement. And so as the county and the state spend funds, we reimburse those costs. That also could happen pretty quickly. The direct federal assistance I talked about is us doing the work. So when we talk about the debris mission, which may be a very large mission there, uh, and I've done them in uh, California before for big fires like this, where I've seen structures on this, neighbor, on, uh, this magnitude destroyed, it's taken us a month to a year to finish the debris mission, just to give you an idea, uh, depending on the number of structures, the amount of concrete that's been removed, the number of structures that need to come down. And those missions have cost in the past anywhere from hundreds of millions of dollars to a billion dollars, depending on how much landfill space you have, where do we recycle stuff at, do we have to take it off island? There, you know, there's all these questions that we got to start working through right now. Um, that's directly the federal government doing it. Um, and we're doing it in support, in coordination, of the county uh, in the state. So, um, and then what we'll do is our mitigation funding is as we uh, identify projects, we provide grants that people can apply for, uh, public entities, 
uh, could apply for for those grants over time. And that will probably really happen a year to 18 months down the, the timeline once you really start identifying uh, what the master plan is, how you're rebuilding, what do we need to mitigate. So a lot of our funding could be directly given, especially to individuals. That's why I say start with that registration process. Uh, go to disasterassistance.gov, download the FEMA app, go to the 1-800 number, and start that. Uh, it could be pretty quickly to get money in your pocket, especially if you need money to cover costs you're expending, especially if you need some rental assistance. And then we're going to figure out through case management uh, what other types of forms of programs we need to bring in here. There may be unique programs that meet your needs that we need to either bring that we used before or new ones we need to develop that's specific to the unique dissident culture out here in Maui. Right. I'm going to add, um, uh, take energy, for example. Uh, the poles in some cases have been incinerated. Uh, they're down. It's going to take, Hiko, a lot of time. We're talking about more than just days. We're talking about weeks to months in some cases to get energy fully restored. In the interim, of course, we're going to do all that we can to get people generators. We're going to do all that we can to find other places for people to live. But it's not going to just be a couple days, uh, like in a terrible rainstorm when power gets restored. Uh, so, so those are some of the challenges. Also speaking to resources, uh, there has been a discussion. We haven't made a final decision yet about this, uh, but with the leadership of the House uh, and the Senate locally, we may very well need to come into a special session to decide on uh, a number, a number of uh, dollars to appropriate specifically to Maui to support the people, to help them with housing, to help them with recovery. Uh, you do recall that when we had flooding uh, in the past, we appropriated over $100 million to directly support our people. And that's why we have rainy day funds. Uh, the legislature this year set aside, this year alone, set aside $500 million, and there was already a billion dollars of resource that was for emergency. This is the greatest emergency we've seen in decades. Hello, next. We'll go here. Um, Thomas Heaton, Civil Beat, um, for the government. Uh, yesterday, Lieutenant Governor Luke said, uh, quote, we never anticipated in a state that a hurricane which did not make impact on our islands will cause this type of wildfires. Uh, a similar phenomenon occurred in, during Hurricane Lane in 2018, um, and experts have been warning of the increasing dangers of wildfires in Hawaii for a number of years. Uh, my question is, after Hurricane Lane, did the state make any changes, or did it prepare for this kind of scenario uh, going future from there. We've never experienced a wildfire that affected a city like this before. So this is something that we have not experienced before. Uh, we have experienced wildfires across the state uh, and they've been tragic, but usually tragic in open space. This was, of course, a shock to see a hurricane and its winds and the trade winds caused collateral damage, which was the spread of fire. Uh, I think that we're seeing this for the first time in many different parts of the world, where we're seeing fires from California to Colorado. I would comment that I've been contacted by several governors across the country to share their experiences. It is difficult now in a time where global warming is combined with strengthening storms and drought. That is difficult for us. I think that the tragedy would have been very difficult to anticipate, especially as it came in the night with high winds. But that does not mean that we won't do everything we can in the future to stop this. Uh, our administration, which is just six months in, has begun to assess all of our safety. And this has been the hardest uh, experience to factor into that. I do think that as we rebuild, we'll have to take into consideration a lot more fire safety. Uh, we are short on a lot of resources across the state, and that means we're short on helicopters and we're short on personnel. It's difficult to find enough resources to pay firefighters and police adequately to get them into the discipline. So it's always a challenge in the islands. Uh, but this is going to be a priority. Uh, climate change is here, and it's affecting the islands, and I think that's what you're seeing uh, with this fire. Okay. 
just one second. We love our civil beat, but we got a twofer in there. So let's not hana ho that. Um, if you are from a media outlet, I'd like to you guys to just pair up with your partner. If you've got multiple people here taking one question per outlet. So mahalo nui. I'm actually going to change it up. We did get a question in from Honolulu Star Advertisers, Dan Nakaso for the mayor and police chief. Were mandatory evacuation orders ever issued for Lahaina? If not, why not? Were civil defense sirens considered as a way to warn residents and tourists of the fire? Um, yes, mandatory evacuations did take place uh, in on the west side for those affected areas. So it wasn't, uh, for example, Napili or Kapalua, uh, but certainly for uh, Lahaina. Another question, sirens, different things in there. We, we, we have tone alerts that go out. Uh, we, we know that there's things that we can do to be preventative. How many times have we heard have two weeks of supply if you have a hurricane? The only thing I would say to the person asking the question is, we've heard that for how long? Do we all have two weeks of supply? Probably not. And so I, I say that because nobody saw this coming. And if we did, we wouldn't have this situation, but this is a tragedy. And so we do everything we can to mitigate the threats when they come. But this was not one of those, if it's predictable, it's preventable. Nobody saw this coming, period. Mahalo, I'm going to go this side of the room, right back there. You, yes. Hi there. Uh, Governor, fellow dignitaries, uh, Justin Michaels from the Weather Channel. Uh, and you may have covered this if you have. Uh, I apologize. Is there a handle yet on how many people are still missing at this hour? He's going to defer that to me, I guess. Sure, whomever. So, uh, honestly, we don't know. And, and here's the challenge. There's no power. There's no internet. There's no radio coverage our pack sets we're having a hard time getting through on that the fire burned two fires or three fires ago fiber optic cables which we're in the process on this budget to start replacing some of those and so now you compound some of that and so when we're speaking to our officers over there we're actually having them to get to a certain area so we can get on a sat phone as we're recovering so i would say that we've got approximately and this is a very fluid number but let's say there's a, a, a thousand missing people doesn't mean that's how many that we have uh that have that have passed i'm not saying that number at all but because we can't contact them and because they can't necessarily come uh into the greater valley as quickly or as much as we'd like because they're actually in shelter uh, until we get some of those basic things set up uh, we're not going to have that number but the nice you know solution to that is we have a, uh, a family assistance center set up and so anybody that's missing anybody we would direct you there we'll make sure that you have that information provided people can go there and give uh, the information of those that they're, they're seeking to find and as we are able to reunify we will and and if we have to make certain notifications from there we, we will do that as well I am going to jump here Wendy Osha, Pacific Media Group in Maui now. I'm just wondering if you could, I know you guys have done reconnaissance, maybe the fire department or the mayor can answer this. Um, walk us through Front Street, Lahaina. What specific neighborhoods are gone? Was it sporadic? Was it every other house? Was it the entire area? Can you give us a better idea of what we're looking at? It's all gone. What from poor mana from poor mana to the chart house how about going up malta like lahaina luna road how far the cutoff was uh the area well what we could see today was the highway uh so the winds look like they came from malka down to makai some of the parts were open but let's say kiave street in that area there was one structure that was is is irreparable uh, the, the harm there but others were intact but the older neighborhood from the the line on the road from the road down to front street everything there is is destroyed what about the behind the luna area that's i gotta let makana ask you who, who she picks up <laughs> so are, I you, wait, are you together as a follow no, up just to follow because i'm not Okay, can you saying. please identify yourself? Yeah, it's Paul Aker with Maui Alert. Already? So, so those houses in that subdivision by the bypass, how much of that is gone as well? 
So you're referring to the Lahaina Luna Road neighborhood. Correct. So um, the fire did start above that. And some of the first homes they caught on fire were in that neighborhood. And from those upper houses, it did go into the Kahoma area. And, and it also extended to Oahi Kuli, which is um, above the highway, closer to the fire station. That kind of answers your question. Any other, before we let you go, any other specific questions related to this? Any piggyback questions? Go ahead. Uh, Daryl Huff from Blaine's down. 